Skewers in chess are similar to the skewer that we use in our real life. So for the people who don't know what a skewer is, it's basically a long piece of wood or metal used for holding pieces of food together during the cooking process. And in chess, skewer is a tactic which you can use to gain material advantage in the game. So for example, if the opponent's pieces are aligned in the same file or in the same diagonal or maybe on the same rank, then you can use the skewer tactic to attack those pieces simultaneously. So for example, here in this case, white can simply play rook to e1 check, attacking the king and thereby attacking this rook standing behind this king. Since the king is in check, he has to move and now the rook is gone. Here is another example. So since these pieces are aligned in the same diagonal, black can play bishop b5 check, attacking the king and thereby this queen. The king has to move and now this queen is gone. I know this looks very much similar to the chess tactic pin, right? Because in pinning also, we are attacking pieces which are lined up in the same file, diagonal or rank. But hey, there is a small difference. And that is, when you pin your opponent's pieces, generally the lower piece is ahead and the higher piece is standing behind that piece. So, if you play bishop b2 over here, then this chess tactic would be called as a pin. But, if you play rook to e1 over here, then this would be called as a skewer because in skewer you generally attack the higher piece because in skewer chess tactic the higher piece is attacked first and when it moves it gives you opportunity to capture the lower value piece which was hiding behind the higher piece. Now since you have already understood this concept let's sharpen our skills in this tactic by solving some brilliant puzzles. So here is the first puzzle. Both the players want to quickly get a queen on the board, but here it is black's turn in the game. And the position is such that technically it is a draw. But, but if black here doesn't calculate well, then he might just end up losing this game. How? If black pushes his pawn further, then white will play h5. If a3, then h6. If a2, then h7. And now here is the key moment. Because the game is technically a draw, but if black makes one mistake, then he will quickly lose this game. So how can black draw this game? I'll give you 5 seconds to think. So the move that draws the game is king to c2. Well, why king to c2? Why not just promote this pawn? Well, if black does that, then he will immediately lose to this pawn promoting into a queen and now it's a skewer. Black has to move and now this queen is gone and white can now easily win this game. So let's go back. Therefore, before pushing this pawn ahead, black first should make sure that he gets his king out of this diagonal. That is why king c2 is the only move that saves this game. Let's move on to the second puzzle. Here black is up in material by three points and he is currently attacking our queen over here. So what should white play over here? Well, in order to find the winning move over here is to first observe that this queen sitting over here is totally undefended and it is sitting in the same rank as the king over here. So is there a way that you can find a move that will put these pieces into a skewer? So to play a skewer, you will have to get rid of this pawn over here and that is what white does over here. So the winning move over here is rook takes f6 check, pawn takes rook and now queen h7 check, skewing black's pieces. King moves to f8 and now the queen is gone and now white can easily win this game. Let's go back. What if the pawn doesn't capture this rook? What if the king moves to the g8 square? Then from here onwards, it's a mate in 6. Because white can now play queen takes e8 check, the rook is gone, king moves to h7, queen e4 check, king g8, queen d5 check, queen moves to f7 to block this check, but now queen takes queen check, king moves to h8, rook to g6 and now it doesn't matter what black plays here because every move will just simply lead to a checkmate. So let's go back. What if the king doesn't go on the g8 square but rather decides to capture this rook? So if king takes f6, then it's a quick mate in 2 because rook f1 check, 
The king doesn't have any place to go, so the queen has to block the check and now rook takes queen is a checkmate. Let's move on to the third puzzle. Here white is upper pawn, but it is black's turn in the game and you have to find the winning move for black. Your time starts now. So in order to find the winning move, you have to see, carefully evaluate the position of your pieces. Look at this. Both of your pieces are sitting at a such a good square and this king just have this one escape square over here. So with the combination of these moves, you can actually skew white's pieces. So the winning move starts with rook d1 check. King moves to b2, the only square and now bishop c1 check. King cannot move backwards to either of these squares because if he does, then bishop a3 would be a checkmate. So therefore, the king is forced to go on the c3 square. And now you can easily skew white's pieces with bishop to d2 check. King moves and now the queen is gone. Let's move on to the last puzzle. Since black's back rank is weak and white was about to penetrate this back rank with his rook, black decided to block this back rank with his rook. So he played rook to a3, offering a trade of rooks. So should white trade rooks over here? Well, white should definitely trade rooks over here. Why? Because after this bishop captures over here, white can now launch a double attack with the move queen to a4. Not only attacking this bishop over here, but also this key a8 point, which is the weakness in the black's back rank. If black tries to save his bishop, then he will quickly lose to queen a8 check, king moves and now black has lost a rook. And notice the bishop cannot capture the queen because it's currently pinned to the black's king. Do like this video and subscribe to my channel if you enjoyed solving these amazing puzzles today. And now it's time for the question of the day. So white is threatening to promote his pawn into a queen over here which is currently being guarded by this rook of ours. But there is also this hanging piece over here and black has his own pass pawn too. So considering all of these information, can you find the best move for black over here? Let me know your answers in the comments box and I'll see you in the next video.